Hey guys, John V here from Phone Reno. Right now you're watching our video comparison between the BlackBerry Z10 and the Samsung Galaxy S3. Two different handsets, two different platforms. BlackBerry Z10, of course, running BlackBerry's new operating system, the QNX Base OS X platform, and the Galaxy S3, powered and backed by the Android Experience. Two opposing platforms, they have their unique differences between one there. One that might be better off for you, or maybe the other. We're going to find out in this comparison right now. Even now, the Samsung Galaxy S3 continues to be a very attractive handset, and we actually appreciate it more than the BlackBerry Z10. And I can tell side by side, they kind of look very, very similar to one in terms of overall footprint. But of course, seeing that the Galaxy S3 has the larger display, it is both wider and also um, a taller than its rival, but not by much. Strangely though, the Galaxy S3 is both lighter and skinnier than its rival, and it just feels better in the hand, just because of the rounded, rounded, uh, rounded design of the handset combined with its very slick uh, polycarbon body whereas with the BlackBerry Z10 it's a little bit more squarish by design still nice and clean too but overall we'd actually go with the Galaxy S3's design more Meanwhile, above their displays, they feature the same set of items. We have their earpieces, you have their light and proximity sensors, their front-facing cameras. It's a 1.9 megapixel one on the Galaxy S3 versus the 2 megapixel one on the uh, Z10. They both can shoot videos in 720p. And the other thing we like about both, they also boast LED notification lights. Even though we like the responsive feel of their physical buttons, both the volume controls and even their dedicated power buttons, it's just that the Galaxy S3 set of buttons are a lot more distinctive to the touch, whereas with the, with the Z10, it's a little bit more on the flat side. As far as some of the commonalities that we find around their trims, they include a variety of different things. You have their 3.5mm headset jacks, they have noise cancellation microphones, uh, their speaker phones too, well on the Galaxy S3 it's in the rear, and you also have micro, micro USB ports for charging data connectivity. With the Galaxy S3 though, it relies on a special MHL adapter to gain video ad functionality, so that's why I kind of appreciate more the fact that the Z10 features a micro HDMI output for easy video out access. And of course, in the rear, you have the respective cameras. They're actually both 8 megapixels in size, autofocus, of course. They have LED flashes, and they both shoot 1080p videos. Another thing that we like about both handsets is the fact that they feature removable back covers, so you can gain access to their batteries. They also feature NFC, of course, um, and also micro SD card slots for increasing their storage capacities. Honestly, it comes down to personal taste as to which display is better between the two. It's a 4.2 inch uh, IPS LCD panel in the Z10 and its resolution is slightly higher, 768 by 1280 pixels versus the larger 4.8 inch Super AMOLED display of the Galaxy S3 and its resolution is 720 by 1280 pixels. So on paper, the Z10 wins it in the pixel density department. It's 356 pixels per inch versus 306 on the Galaxy S3. So if you run things like the web browser, Honestly, even though it might seem like it's a huge disparity on paper with their pixel densities, we're still able to make a, a fine details, no problems at all, especially in a zoomed out view. Both are very sharp looking. They kind of get a little bit more clarity with the Z10's display more. Uh, beyond that, it's just whether or not you prefer more natural, neutral looking colors with the uh, Z10's uh, IPS LCD panel, or the more saturated tones of the uh, Galaxy S3 Super AMOLED panel. They're both very nice, wide viewing angles, but you get kind of bit more vibrancy with the wow factor associated with the Galaxy S3's display. But when it comes to outdoor usage, there's no question about it. The Z10's more viewable than its rival. So here we go, we're going to dive in right now to the platform experience. As we know, BlackBerry Z10 offers the new BlackBerry 10 experience. It's still in relatively the early stages of its development, but for, for version 1.0 platform, it's still very polished, especially on the visual side. A lot of neat effects going on with it, just like the cool animations and transition effects littered throughout the uh, platform. It just gives it a really nice eye candy to it. But in contrast, the Galaxy S3 and its Android Jelly Bean experience is still more comprehensive. It's has a very nice presentation, a lot of personalization too. You can change things like the background, uh, the widget's extremely useful. Um, it just seems like it has the deeper set of comprehensive functions that would expect out of a complete mobile operating system. 
Naturally, the two operating systems might have some complexity with them, but it seems like it's a little bit higher, more, a little bit more with the BlackBerry 10 experience just because it heavily relies on these new gestures. So when you're using the platform for the very first time, it might come off as being a little bit steeper with its learning curve. Uh, but there's other similarities too. If you do a pinch, if you do a gesture swipe down gesture from top, you gain access to some connectivity features on both devices. But with the Galaxy S3 and Android, it also acts as the notifications area. And we like how Android um, executes notifications. It's just simpler, uh, more intuitive at any time. Just swipe down, you get access to it. With BlackBerry 10, it's a little bit more to it, more of a process. You get to peak view right there, and then from there you get to the BlackBerry Hub, which is your centralized area uh, where you get all your notifications. Now both handsets have different ways of executing multitasking. We like both just because they they make sense. But with the BlackBerry Z10, there's just a little bit more pizzazz in how they do it. Of course, let's say for example, you're running an application, you use again a swipe gesture to actually minimize the application and make it as an active frame. So you have all these active frames, which are basically minimized states of all the applications. Uh, with Android, it's a little bit different, of course, if you're running an application, um, if you go back to the home screen, you could quickly get to the multitasking uh, tray by holding down the home button. And from here, you get that list of all the open applications. So they're both intuitive. Even though the Galaxy S3 has a larger display, it doesn't prove to have a larger spacious keyboard than the uh, Z10. And quite frankly, it looks like the Z10's keyboard seems to be more comfortable to use. Now, some of the similarities include very responsive rate. Uh, they also offer uh, um, autocorrect features and also uh, voice dictation, so you could actually speak what, what you want, and they're fairly accurate. But we just find ourselves to be faster with the Black Bear Z10's keyboard just because of its uh, great autocorrect feature. They also have a different way of going about predicting of text. I mean, we do like this gestures that you could use to gain access to some of the other layouts. And with the Galaxy S3, it's still nice that it's also responsive and you have the numbers and punctuations incorporated into the main layout, but we just don't find ourselves as fast as on the uh, Z10. With our lock screens, we appreciate that with the Android experience in the Galaxy S3, it just provides for some, some additional information directly from the uh, from the lock screen. Um, it's very minimal with the Z10. You have some notifications here and you could quickly launch the camera application if you want to, but that's the extent of its uh, usefulness. With the Galaxy S3, of course, you could launch any of the applications at the bottom here. So messaging, you get to the dialer, open up the uh, camera app, and it even tell you some useful information like the weather conditions. At their core, the email experience on both handsets are great. Uh, they offer a quick and easy setup. But we do find more productivity and enhanced features with the Gmail experience uh, with the Galaxy S3 and Android as a whole versus what's available on the BlackBerry Z10. You can't go wrong with the web browsing experience either. Uh, they're both great just because they offer 4G LTE connectivity. So if you're in an area that has that connection, you can expect the fast data speeds. On top of that, their navigational controls and rendering are pretty good too. You could tell with pinch gestures, kinetic scrolling, pretty instantaneous, and they keep up with our rate and they render stuff on the fly fairly well. So it's great in that aspect. Uh, we just do find that uh, in addition to the stock browser with the Galaxy S3, you could download Chrome and with Chrome, it's just neat that you have some of those gestures you could use to switch between the tabs. We're going to go have to go with the Galaxy S3 when it comes to the music player. So when you're playing a song, they might look the same, but when you're browsing through your selection, we just like the fact that you have that cool 3D carousel effect going on with it. It just gives a, a lot of eye candy versus the more conventional look of the BlackBerry Z10's uh, music player interface. Nothing really fancy about it. As far as, as far as the audio quality from their speakers, they're both pretty much putting out the same volume output, though we tend to hear crisper tones out of the Galaxy S3. And on top of that, there are a variety of different equalizer settings available on the Galaxy S3 to better enhance its quality. Not a shocker at all, both handsets are more than equipped to play high definition videos and they offer support for a wide array of codecs too. Now you can tell they're both playing this video smoothly, no issues with lag or slowdown, but we appreciate the larger display and more vibrant color tones that are exhibited with the Galaxy S3's display. On top of that, the reason why we prefer the Galaxy S3 is just because you have the pop-up play feature, which is very useful as it layers the video on top of whatever you're doing, so it's great for multitasking. As we know, the two handsets feature 8 megapixel autofocus cameras, and as we took a look at the images that we snap on both handsets on a computer, we kind of find that the results are quite similar to one another, especially in outdoor conditions, plenty of lighting, more than usable, 
but we find that the Galaxy S3 tends to have a little bit more sharpness with its details, uh, especially stuff in the background. Um, it seems just a little bit softer looking with the uh, with the uh, Z10, but still nonetheless pretty good. There's a noticeable color saturation going on with the uh, Z10's uh, images too. And in lower lighting conditions, it's kind of interesting too, just because the it seems as though the uh, Z10 offers a little bit more lighting, whereas the uh, the Galaxy S3 tends to be a little bit darker. But the LED flashes work relatively well with each other. Visually, we prefer the 1080p high-definition high video recording quality on the Galaxy S3. It's sharper looking, but the audio recording tends to be a little bit distorted. Uh, with the BlackBerry Z10, the distracting elements include uh, just the noticeable amount of artifacting as you're panning, even when very slowly, it just seems to become more speckled looking with its details. Thankfully, there are no nagging issues when it comes to call quality. That's just because voices on both ends of the line are more than audible. They're very clear and no distortion whatsoever. The only issues are found with their speakerphones. We tend to notice just some strain the lattice volume setting on the uh, Z10 and on the Galaxy S3. Voices tend to have a little bit of sharpness to them. They're not the best in terms of battery life, but we do notice that the Galaxy S3 are giving us more juice than the BlackBerry Z10. On a full charge using the Sprint version of the Galaxy S3 uh, connected to its EVDO 3G network, we're able to get close to a full day of normal usage out of full battery. In contrast, it's significantly lower on the Z10. We're using with AT&T's HSP Plus network, and we're able to get roughly around the 10 hour mark before it's depleted. Of course, they both offer 4G LT connectivity as well, so if you're on that, you could expect considerably less battery time. Another thing worth mentioning is just the deeper set of features found with the Galaxy S3 and Android as a whole versus the still new BlackBerry 10 experience. It's found mostly with the Maps application and experience. Of course, we know that the uh, Google Maps uh, application is by far the most superior thing out there right now. It blows away whatever is on the BlackBerry 10, BlackBerry 10 experience. You get things like transit directions, turn-by-turn -turn directions, 3D map views, and a ton of other cool features, whereas with the Z10, it's pretty minimalistic. You'll just get voice guided turn by turn directions. It lacks things like satellite view. On top of that, you have the voice recognition services. Uh, you have a very basic one here on the Z10. Um, it can't do, it can't convert stuff and it won't give you specific answers to uh, qu general questions like who's the president of the US. And of course, as we know, uh, Google, Google now is just uh, something uh, more comprehensive and it's uh, far more useful just because you get a lot of useful information just like uh, the temperature, weather information, even driving directions back from work. So which phone should you spend your hard-earned money on? Well, it's really a personal preference here. Um, if you're a power user, no doubt the Galaxy S3 is the preferred handset between the two, especially when they're both $200 to your contract. You're just getting more value for the buck, and you just have a deeper, more comprehensive platform experience. It's definitely going to adhere to your needs. On the other hand, the BlackBerry Z10, it is still a new platform, still in the infancy stages, and there's still a lot of hope in, 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 it, in branching out its experience. But honestly, uh, for what for what we expect nowadays out of a platform, there's just a certain minimum expectation that we want. And right now, it doesn't quite meet the demands of those power users. So you know, there are going to be some compromises made if you decide to go with the BlackBerry Z10. But again, it's just something that you have to bear in mind if you're going to select that device. So if you'd like to learn more about either handsets, guys, you could check out our website, PhoneRena.com. It's John V. Thanks for watching.